Hi guys, Greg here, and today I'm going to be taking a look at a Netflix original series called A Letter for the King. All on today's Greg's Vlog Review. I don't care who they send. We're going to deliver this letter. Stop! We're going to die trying. This is a little uh, mini-series. I guess it's called a mini-series because it's six episodes. And it's based on a Polish novel that was written in 1962. Uh, it's, it's in Polish. I don't even want to attempt to pronounce it. I'm, assume, I'm assuming it's going to be called the same as A Letter to the King. Maybe called something different, but I'm going to butcher that if I pronounce it. So I'm not even going to bother pronouncing it. So minor spoilers. Well, not really spoilers. There has to be an antagonist in films. It's a movie about a prince who is turned evil and plans to overthrow his father's kingdom. So he sends six letters out to unmarked writers to get to the certain points of the world and basically let his allies know that they're going to overthrow the king. So one of the uh, letters is intercepted by a knight and the knight gives a letter to an unlikely hero who happens to be like you know, a 15 year old kid and that's basically the plot is him getting that letter to the king and developing friendships along the way and discovering oneself and stuff like that it's a very interesting show one of the things i want to say right off the bat is that it's a great show for you or your kids it is a game of thrones version of for families there's not bad language there's not nudity there's no sex scenes and there's not like a gratuitous amounts of blood and violence. There is death in it in the show, but they don't like show heads getting chopped off or blood gushing from a wound. It's done very tactfully, which I can appreciate because I really think we're kind of desensitized to that kind of stuff nowadays. The movie stars a bunch of uh, nobodies, uh, which is great. A bunch of new talents, younger talents. Uh, they haven't really been on anything. Amir Wilson is the main character playing uh, Churi. He does a really good job. I, people have criticized the acting on other reviews. I think everyone did a phenomenal job. A lot of these actors, it's some of their first things they've ever done, or it's it's like the second or third thing they've done, which is great. A lot of the younger actors. There are two big headliners in the show. One is David Wellam, who you'd probably recognize as Faramir from Lord of the Rings. And the second actor, who I had a very hard time pinpointing because I know I knew him from somewhere because he's in a ton of stuff when I Googled him, is uh, Omid Dajali. I hope I'm saying his name right. He's been in a ton of stuff. I recognize him from the warden in The Mummy. I will give you 100 pounds to save this man's life. Them. I would pay 100 pounds just to see him hang. Two, 200 pounds. Proceed. Uh, so that was something I was like, oh my God, it's great. He plays like a sleazy politician, which is, which is great. He's a very talented actor. I enjoy him. He does a lot of a lot of stuff. He was, he was in Gladiator as well, too. There's a lot of small roles in big AAA pictures, which is great. There's also a very diverse cast of like uh, the, the prince, there's a group of five kids, and if I'm being completely honest, like watching this mini series gave me a lot of ideas for D&D campaigns, because honestly, it starts exactly like one, which is really fun as a D&D fanatic to see that come to life in a, uh, in a Netflix show. The one thing I really want to take note is it is uh, a short six episode mini series. It did feature three different directors, but my God, one of the most positive things about this film is the camera work. There are so many gorgeous wide shots and they're not just establishing wide shots, they're actually wide shots like when things are happening. You wanna see all five of the kids in the screen, you wanna see the whole town. They really like their wide shots and it's something I've missed in a lot of modern filmmaking. Uh, people get really close uh, or they tend to shake the cam a lot during action scenes or not give you a full spectrum of the environment the characters are in, either because they don't wanna portray that or they're limited to the green screen in the background and they can't do a super wide shot. And because this was filmed in New Zealand, there's actually a lot of locations. I don't know if these are the exact locations, but a lot of similar locations that I recognize from Lord of the rings and it's just so gorgeous that i'm really glad all three different directors went with a lot of wide shots and they're not just used in an establishing shot either they're used in, in all sorts of cases and it's really nice to see a nice wide shot where everyone is in frame and you can see everything and it's such a rare it's so rare to say to see that nowadays and like i said before it's not only the introduction of the quest line of them getting to let to the king is very D, &D ish there's also like several things that the kids run into uh on their way to the castle which reminds me of like some kind of D, D problem or D, D scenario which of course is really good really good fun that said this is a fantasy genre medieval uh movie so there is magic it's used very sparingly but of course you're going to get fun costumes and sword fights and just beautiful landscapes and horses and there's a great horse character in the film i don't want to spoil anything but he adds a lot of uh flavor to it he reminds me a lot of the horse in tangled the only bad thing i have to say about the letter for the king is 
it ends really abruptly. It's only six episodes long, and by the time you get to episode six, everything is hastily kind of summed up together and just solved. Obviously, the climax of the film happens, you know, everything, all that stuff happens. A lot of the character arcs are closed, but I feel like the episode had too much going on and it didn't spend enough time building up the other characters. Like I said, it, the the main character is, is Churi. You follow him, but there's also other side characters as well. And I don't feel the side characters were given any sort of development outside of episode six. And that speaks in part to this very awkward romantic scene between two characters. Like I said, I don't want to spoil anything, but it feels kind of tacked on uh, and kind of out of nowhere. Like I would have liked for them to build that relationship up instead of just having one five minute scene where it was established. Because it's not really apparent throughout the first five episodes that these two have a romantic interest in one another. And that's really my only complaint about it. It's a great road trip miniseries. It's good for kids and adults, means we can both enjoy it because it's not, it doesn't have a large amount of violence or nudity or language, which is fantastic. Each one of the characters is interesting and unique. I just wish the series had more time to develop them over time. They focus on a few of them. I feel like it ends so abruptly that you could have given more time overall to each individual character, maybe have each individual character have their own episode. Maybe they ran into budgeting issues. This was a pretty big, large scale production. They had a lot of nice visual effect work in some establishing shots. They had full scale built towns, beautiful environments and location shooting. Uh, I can't even stress how beautiful it is. You should watch it just for the direction and cinematography alone. Like it's just, it's gorgeous. Some of their locations that they go to, it's absolutely gorgeous. Highly recommend it. I give it an eight out of 10. I know there's a ton of stuff on Netflix and on Hulu and on all these other streaming platforms. It's really hard to shuffle out the tripe from what's good. Highly recommend this. Walked into my wife watching it and I kind of got sucked in and we restarted it from the beginning and we watched it all the way through. Really enjoyed it. Other than the end being rushed, watch it. Watch it with your wife, watch it with your nephew, watch it with your kids. It's a fun fantasy journey for you and them, which is something I think is very difficult to achieve, is to make a movie for kids and adults that we can both like. So check it out. It's on Netflix. A Letter to the King. I don't know what else I'm going to say. I don't want to make these too long. Of course we don't let him go. Yeah, yeah, but that!